Hey, I'm Deborah Anderson, and thank you for joining us for Local Flavor. We've made our way out to rural Pinocchi, and we're joining Mary Goddard today, and she's going to make us some Italian food. If you haven't met Mary, you probably haven't been around very many places. I first met her um, getting my hair done at Charlene's Cut and Curl in Moreland. Mm -hmm. And even this summer, I didn't realize you worked so much with the Farm Bureau. Big with the hunters, and now I finally hear later on down the road how good you are with Italian cooking. So thank you. <laughs> so I'm really excited. What are you going to make for us today? We're going to make pasta, the basic pasta. Just basic pasta. Basic, okay. Basic pasta. Is it is it difficult? No, it is not difficult at all. Yeah, some people make everything look easy. Well, so. this is very easy. <laughs> um, we're going to take a recipe, it sounds like, out of the book that your sister wrote, is that yes, right? Tell yes. us a little bit about the book. The book is, um, was written by my sister, Fran Schaefer. She had an Italian restaurant for many years in Grand Island, Nebraska. And many people that would come into the restaurant would want her recipes. And of course, we didn't give them out because mm -hmm. a lot of them were from my grandmother and also my Irish grandmother. And we just kept them within the family. After she closed the restaurant, uh, she decided to write the cookbook. Mm -hmm. It's won four national awards. Wow. And, I, and for one reason, it's, it's a little bit about our family, where we came from, and how we all loved Italian cooking. And also, her son was attention deficit. Mm -hmm. So she decided she was going to make everything from scratch. So she could control preservatives. So she could, yes, and yes. So in the book is how to make your own marshmallows, how to make your own crackers, uh, numerous things that you would generally go and buy at the grocery store, but has uh, artificial additives and preservatives in it. And so it's quite an extensive cookbook, and I think that. Uh, people really enjoy it because there's many different things in it. I do love it. I have looked through it and the recipes, she lays it out so easily so it really does look like you could do it. And I love just seeing pictures of the family and the little stories about that. Yes. And how Thank the you. name of the restaurant came from, um, sounded like Grandma, found that the place looked like a palace. Yes. So it was Nona's Palazzo. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. beautiful. Yes. So is it the restaurant on the cover of the book? Yes, that, the restaurant was in the first floor and they live in the second and third floor. And now that the restaurant is gone, then now the entire place is uh, a home. It's also uh, uh, on the register because of the historical sites because of the architecture of that particular house. Yeah, it's gorgeous. This is fresh egg pasta, and this is the recipe we will follow, which was in my sister's book, and I know it by heart, so I really can close it. Okay, I'd okay. rather see the nice picture on the front anyway. <laughs> That's awesome. So you must make pasta a lot, huh? I make, I make it a lot because for me it's easier, if I run out of pasta or something, I can make that in 10 minutes instead of going to the grocery store, which is 26 miles round trip for a package of spaghetti. And it's much better tasting, easy to make, and much cheaper. Great. So. And you can control exactly what's in it. You've mentioned that you're yes. sensitive. Is that yes, right? Yes, I am. Although I, I can tolerate this. Okay, so. great. I use a KitchenAid. And I start out with um, this, uh, this uh, mixer, it is for, for cakes and it scrapes the bowl. And so I start out with this because uh, I want everything to mix up first. And then I go with my dough hook. Now I recognize that as one that is on my wish list. That didn't come with the mixer. That's the one with the nice uh, spatula right. scraper ends. Right. Oftentimes mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go on KitchenAid online because they have absolutely every attachment to go with this machine. And mm -hmm. so you can browse and say, oh, I would really like that. And I, I have Christmas presents lined up for, for my <laughs> KitchenAid. So. Oh, you buy them for the KitchenAid? Absolutely. <laughs> what a Christmas great idea. Summer. I'd probably get more of them if I did it that way. <laughs> OK, the pasta recipe is two cups of flour, unbleached flour, mm -hmm. one cup of semolina flour. And I'll just put that in there. Now with the unbleached flour, it has a little bit more proteins in it than a bleached flour. So yes. is that why you're using it? Will it firm up a little more? It does that, but I use it specifically because enriched flour or bleached flour, they take out all the nutrients when they bleach it and then they put them back in. And I would just as soon use the um, flour directly, uh, the white flour that is not bleached. And 
uh, I, that is my concern. I can make about anything from it. I know that some people think that it's not as light as some flowers, but you can alter your recipe to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but I use it in this pasta. Another thing, when you make homemade pasta, you want it to be a stronger pasta, uh, a, uh, a stronger dough. Because when you cut the pasta, you want it to hold its shape instead of crumble and fall. Exactly. And so, and then I have, and another a flower I'm using is semolina, which is the strongest durum flower, and that also adds to the structure of the pasta. And it's a little more yellow than a bleached anyway, so you, you wouldn't need a bleached flower because your pasta is going to be a little bit yellow from the semolina anyway. That's true, but mm -hmm. I don't understand why we, why we need something bleached. So <laughs> <laughs> then I take and I, I just stir that just a little bit. And then I add my three eggs. Oh, I love that little measuring cup. Mm -hmm. And I um, start mixing it. Then I watch it a little bit because it starts to get chunky. Um, and you have to look at the dough to make sure that it's going to have enough liquid. Mm -hmm. Now I'll turn it off and I'll raise it. Make sure that all the egg is dispersed. Almost always I have to add a little more liquid and, and I add water, just plain water to this. What consistency are you looking for? Do you want it to where it stirs easily? No, what I want is enough liquid that it's going to form into a ball. Okay. And that's what I'm looking for. And it takes a little while. And so I'm adding a little bit of water, maybe a couple of teaspoons, or a couple of tablespoons, I'm sorry. And now it's starting to form into a ball. And so I take this off and I add my dough hook because my dough hook is what forms it into. So we are going to change attachments is yes. what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. I am. Because this attachment won't uh, form it into a ball. It'll just keep it in, in little chunks. Now this is the one that comes with, if any time you get a KitchenAid, it's going to come with this attachment. It'll come with this. It'll come with this attachment, only it doesn't have the rubber. Yeah, it's uh, a metal one. Yeah, it's metal. Mm -hmm. Now some people start to make their dough with the dough hook. Would that be okay too? Or sure. you just find this a little faster? I find maybe? this easier for me. Okay. So whatever is easier for you. Now if you take a look at the inside uh, of this, I'm just going to turn this off because you can see where that is starting to have like um, pebbles almost. And that's what you want to see. I'm just feeling it and I, I know that it's going to need a little bit more liquid. Okay. And so I'm going to add a little bit more liquid and then we'll turn it on and then it'll be done here in just a second. But the pebbles tell us we're getting close, right? Yes, it it's does. It's pretty well. Mm -hmm. yes. This really isn't taking that long. Doesn't. Well, if we weren't doing the show, I would be, it would be done. Because, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, can you put it on higher? Yes, uh-huh. Is there any concern about overbeating of the dough? Sometimes you know you don't want to overbeat oh, something. Well, that would probably be on something that you want fluffy. Uh huh. Like if it has yeast in it, but this mm -hmm. doesn't have yeast in no, it. No, no, it does not. It doesn't have salt in it. It's just flour, eggs, and water. That's it. Now, but if we wanted to put a little color in here, are are there things other people add? What about to get the red or the green, the spinach pasta? You can make a wonderful spinach mm -hmm. uh, noodle. You can make a, you can put a gargonzola in it. You can put, which is a cheese. You can put um, pumpkin in it. You can mm. do tomatoes. And you anything. would maybe replace those before the liquid that you're putting in? Yes. Okay, here we are now. If you were making the spinach pasta, the, I never see clumps in it though, it's just the color. How do they do that? Do well, you know? I puree my, my spinach. I cook it down and mm -hmm. then I puree it and then it just goes in here just like 
as if it was um, part of the flower, you know. Mm -hmm. I puree it. I don't, I'm not sure how they do it otherwise. I never, never use artificial food color, ever. Oh, yeah. I didn't think they would because they usually don't call it just green pasta, it's spinach pasta or mm -hmm. a flavor. Okay. Now, you put just some unbleached flour there mm -hmm. to turn it out on yes. too? Yes. And you can see it's not totally together, but it will be in a minute. Let's You're going to need it a little bit. Now, do you want that extra flour that you're rolling it in to be incorporated in? Or? Yes, okay. that's fine. You want this to be a little bit firm? We want a stiff dough. And there you are. All in one piece. Mm -hmm. Now, do we start rolling it out at once? Or I, do we let no, I always let my dough rest. And I let bread dough rest. Of course, it has to rise. I let uh, this, this rest. I just think that it... Um, Forms together better. And generally, I take the bowl and I put it right over there and I let it rest for 10 or 15 minutes. Now, once you have your dough made, you can put it in the refrigerator. It'll stay up to about a week in the refrigerator. Or you can freeze this. You can make um, a day of dough, a day of pasta, and just take this and freeze it. And then when you want it, you pull it out and you're ready to go. Just need to get it back to room temperature. Just need to get it back to room temperature, yes. Okay. And we'll go to the next step. Okay, so while this has been resting, we have been preparing the table with all kinds of new equipment. And I had no idea. How much equipment are we going to need to get this, um, all of this Italian food done? Well, in Fran's cookbook, for people who want to know exactly how to uh, prepare to uh, fix an Italian meal, she has all the equipment you need. And for, for us today, you need uh, a, a machine to roll out the ravioli. This, uh, or the pasta, this is the machine that I always used to use. My mother gave this to me years and years ago. Mm -hmm. and it's a pasta is, roller. It's a pasta roller, yes. And, but now, of course, I use the KitchenAid it's much faster. The only difference is that every time I decide to change a pasta, I have to change the head. Oh, okay. This yeah. one I can roll out and then just go straight to either fettuccine or spaghetti. And also these machines have other attachments that fit right into this groove, so you could probably go yeah, I think I've seen them even bigger with yes, different kinds yes, of attachments, so you don't have to change anything, yes. you just add on. But you have to have muscles. You, you, you need to work on your muscle strength, and this is the one you want to use. So. <laughs> and but, she, but now you use this, because yes. you're like your grandma, and you love technology. Yes, new. <laughs> if it works, only if it works. <laughs> okay. so. But um, in her book, she'll tell you, like, for instance, a garlic press. Um, and there's not a lot of uh, homes that have a garlic press. A ravioli cutter, and I'll show you the ravioli cutter that I really, really like, and I have about four of them, and this is, again, technology, a new ravioli cutter. Mm -hmm. um, the only attachment that I would maybe not purchase for, for the KitchenAid is they have a ravioli maker, mm -hmm. and you place the filling in, in little pockets, I believe, and then you run the dough through, and it's supposed to seal everything. I think that's a good waste of time. You can make ravioli fast, easy, uh, just by using your machine to roll out the dough and then uh, using your ravioli. A little cutter. hand tool like it's right. pictured here. Right. We, uh, every Italian cook needs wooden spoons. I'm not exactly sure why, but you must have wooden spoons, and I have <laughs> an array of wooden spoons. There's um, other things like a whisk and an uh, eight-cup Pyrex bowl for measuring. We do a lot of actually, we do a lot of cooking in the microwave as far as like making a cream sauce at bechamel. You can make it right in the microwave. Oh. And then nothing is scor uh, uh, scorched on your pan when you do it in the microwave. So the, that's what's so neat about this book is that's shortcuts to gourmet cooking. And that it, is the name of it. Yes, shortcuts to gourmet cooking. That's exactly that's right. But if we want to go ahead and start with um, the pasta, we can start doing that, and I can show you how to. 
Okay, roll out your pasta. Check our ro rested pasta. I'm gonna get this out of your way okay. so it doesn't get dirty. It, it, it's kind of, it's rested now. I don't know if you can tell from when we put it under, but it just looks shinier. It, uh, I don't know, I just feel like, even though it's an innate object, it, there's egg and flour, it just rests and needs to um, Maybe become it homogenizes <laughs> yeah. or absorbs it a little better. Yes. Kind of like soup gets better the longer it That's, sits. I agree with that. We cut these into sections. It looks like bread. Then I press it down and I take a roller. This is a little rolling pin. It's one of my favorite. It's not a big rolling pin and you use just your hands and the palms of your hands. But you would be hard pressed to use just a rolling pin to get the pasta thin enough. Oh, you know, the old Italian women and the old German women could do it. I don't know how they did it, but they, they did do it. <laughs> and also. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so it takes a lot longer. I just want to do this one on this machine just to show you how it works. Then we're going to switch over to the KitchenAid. Okay. But this, you just run it through. You know what this reminds me of is when I was little at the gas station, they had a giant washing machine you could put the the thing to wipe your car with. Ringer washing yeah. machine, that's exactly right. <laughs> we play right. with that all the time. Yes. But look how much thinner it is already. Mm -hmm. Now, how, but that's not as thin as I've seen it. How do you get it even thinner? We're just starting. Okay. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this off and we're going to switch over to the big yes. gun. <laughs> the faster one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, imagine if you didn't have that clamp right. to the table, that would be yeah, yeah. Quite well, if it wasn't clamped to the table, then we wouldn't be doing it very well. The attachment that goes onto the KitchenAid, again, is like the Ringer washing machine. It is two discs that are that have uh, no indentations in them, and there's a little nodule here, and this just fits in, and then you tighten it. This knob here controls the thickness of the dough. So you start wider. You start wider, yes. What happens if you start it too thin? Does it get crumbly? You, well, if it's too much pressure on the machine. Oh, okay. you, uh, you start wide because the machine ha it has to get the dough uh, thinner, so, you, so it would be very hard on the motor of the machine to put in a big clump. Yeah. So you can't do it that way. I'm going to run this through again and then I, since I just love perfection, I'll show you what else I do. Okay. I think she moved that back so it wouldn't go on the floor. That's mm -hmm. weird. It just, it, it does look amazing to me how it looks creamier and smoother every time it goes through. Right. Now I'm going to fold this over again. Put it in again now um, because we're showing this, how to do this. I don't have it on the high speed. Oh, too loud? Right. Well, yes. The, also, I don't like the frayed ends. And so I end up folding that over. You don't have to do this. My sister thinks that um, I'm wasting time. I, <laughs> I she like trims to it off. She just trims it off. She takes the, or just cuts it, the spaghetti or whatever she's doing. Whatever little pieces leave mm -hmm. off, then they're dried and used to put in a minestrone or something like that. Nothing's wasted. Okay, see now, isn't that beautiful? It does. It looks like Laffy Taffy. Yes. It does, doesn't it? It does. I put some flour on it. Now we start making the pasta thinner to the thickness that we want. Okay. You're, I generally have my fettuccine a little bit thicker than my spaghetti. So uh, we will make fettuccine first, okay? Before it's too thin. Okay. 
Well, uh, we have plenty of dough. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to start off with two. I'm just going to go right down the, the scale. So there's numbers on these? Yes, so okay. one, two, three, four, five. One is the thinnest or the? The thickest. The thickest, okay. And I'm not sure, but I think on my manual, I think it's the opposite. Oh, no. So. <laughs> I'm just impressed with how well it presses it down so that like, w even where you folded it over, I thought it would be loose. Mm -mm, no. But it, it isn't at all. Look at that. And you're still on number two, right? No. I'm to three now. To three. Four. It just looks so fun. And is it sticky at all? Or no. are you having put on that? That flower has prevented okay. that. Okay, we're going to stop right now because if you want to make your own lasagna noodles, you're here. This is lasagna this noodles. This is lasagna. And all you have to do is just cut the length that you want. For your pan. For your pan. You can dry them, like dried, uh, dried noodle, but you have to dry them overnight. Or you can cut them and put them in a flat pan and freeze them fresh. And then when you want them, you just go, you, you can go and get them. Mm. So you can do whatever you want to. But right now we're at lasagna. Okay, that's so, good to know. Yes, and it's it just tastes so wonderful. We're going to go to five, and that's going to be uh, fettuccine. How many numbers are there total? Ah, uh, there are seven. Okay. Seven would be like an angel hair pasta. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, you saw the piece of dough that we had. They were all about that same size. Yes, and that's, that's, that's what you get out of there. It's so pretty. So that's enough probably to feed a family of four right there. Okay, now what I do is I take my knife. I don't like long spaghetti. You know when you buy spaghetti, it's so long and then when people eat it, it's like it never ends. You can never find the end of the spaghetti. Right, and so, then the sauce flips everywhere yes. when you're spinning it on. So I cut it um, eating length is mm -hmm. what I call it. But I'll cut this in two and then I just take this and I'll, and I'll lay it over to the side. And you're not worried at all about that sticking to each other, No, right? because I have a l enough flour on there. Okay, awesome. Them. So I think eating size is about right here. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to do three of those. And this is going to be fettuccine, right? This will be fettuccine. Oh, they look perfect. Again, like I say, the only thing I don't like about this machine is every time I want to change a, a shape, I have to change the head. And if you haven't got a KitchenAid, what usually is in the front is this little logo you just take it out to sneak in your attachments so I should show you this has the little notches cut in oh, so they are about the width of a they are fettuccine, fettuccine noodle and you'll see that the cylinders each have um, a knife or the, the little circles intersect so they virtually cut the noodle Mm-hmm. And I see it also. It doesn't say fettuccine anywhere on there. You can no, sort of figure it out just, yourself. Well, you know what? If, this would be like an egg noodle. Like uh, if you were making tuna noodles, whatever, mm -hmm. any time that you're making an egg noodle, for, for Italians that would be a fettuccine, that, the wider, flatter noodle. It does say on there, do not immerse. How are you to clean these? Do you put them in the dishwasher? Absolutely not. Never. It would ruin them. I have a little brush and you just go in and you clean out everything. Right, because as That's firm it. as this dough is, it probably doesn't get gummed up in those little No, hairs. and if it does, you have to, if it gets gummed up, then what you do is you, you do not try and get it out, you let it dry. Oh, and You let it dry, then you turn it on and the dry uh, pasta just falls out, so. Okay, so here we are with our uh, pasta noodles or our pasta, uh, the flat part. Um, Sometimes I let them sit for just a little while because if they dry just a little bit, they go through the machine a little better. Okay. So 
So we're going to go ahead and turn this on. But you wouldn't want to put them through all the way dry. That would just well, it wouldn't no, that wouldn't do it. No. Look how pretty. There's your fettuccine noodle. Mm. Want to play this one? Not sticky at all, but perfectly pliant. Oh, I want this attachment so bad. Okay, there, there's your fettuccine noodle. Now you can do um, one of three things. You can have some sauce on the oven right now, and you can throw this in some boiling water and immediately eat it. Raw pasta will not take as long to cook as uh, dried pasta. So, that's the first thing you can do. <laughs> the second thing you can do is you can uh, fry, uh, excuse me, freeze this fresh. So if you get a flat box, you line it with a parchment paper, you put this in, and lay it flat, and so they're not sticking together, but these are not, but you, you want them not to be sticking together. And then uh, you, you'll put the, the first layer down, cover it again, and then you can just layer that. And then... Oh, so with parchment in between? Yeah, parchment in between or, or plastic wrap. And freeze it. And then would you just, uh, after it's frozen, would you seal it up in something? Or just well, you have you cover you cover the box. Yes, you put uh, aluminum foil or something over the top so of it. Get the freezer right. taste. Another thing, you can get very nice plastic um, boxes now that you can use to to do that. And and some of them are are not very deep, so you can layer your pasta. Oh, okay. And, and uh, mm -hmm. that that has a lid uh, and it can seal, and then the, you're done. The other thing you can do is you can dry it and then you can uh, you can dry it flat and it takes about overnight or how you buy it in Italy is that it's picked up and it's folded over like that oh they just do it on the table though and they dry they they dry it it's dried and then you can pick up that piece and and store it like the uh, like that dried I have some that we've already done, and this is dried fettuccine that I just bent over. That's about the serving size, so if you're going to dry your fettuccine, what you want to do is take enough so it would be enough for one serving. So you would know if you had five bundles, you're going to uh, serve five yeah, people. Yeah, how did you know what a serving was? Just because you've always worked with it? Yes. Or, okay. <laughs> is that, it one width of the, uh, the machine? Uh, it's more by ounces. Okay. And s so if you look on the package of spaghetti, it'll say a 10 ounce package of spaghetti will feed five people or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And so you, you can kind of go like that. Okay. And you know about how much it is. This would be enough for uh, your first plate. Now, if I wanted these to dry faster, what if we hung them over a rod or you something? Can yes, you can. They're just a little harder to store because when you remove them off the rod, when they dry, they, they shrink in. Uh -huh. And so you have that little curve there. So when you try and remove them off of the rod, you can't pick them up. You have to slide them down the rod. I see. Mm -hmm. That so. makes sense. Might okay. snap them. So there we are with the, that's fettuccine. And I'm going to do this with it because I want to dry it like that. I'll put that back in there. This is the fettuccine dried straight. And see, so you can see how as it dries, it curls. It doesn't dry totally straight, it curls. But you can, can store it like that as well. Mm -hmm. It's not a problem. The density of this is different than a botan uh, fettuccine, and this also cooks faster. Thin bottom fettuccine. Even though you've dried it. it Even though you've dried faster. it. Yes. It does look thinner, actually. So it probably would. So we're going to lay those down. Okay. They probably have something in them, too, when you buy them that makes them. Right. So here we are. Again, I'm going to do this. And if I remember right, we're going to get it a little thinner for spaghetti. Yes, we are. Right? Mm -hmm. So what do I have to do? 
Oh my, we got to change the roller back again. We have to go back to this roller. Mm -hmm. So we're going back here. Actually, it goes to, it has eight different, eight different okay. thicknesses. I need to know, this has been on my wish list a long time. But I've never seen them in use, so you know, wasn't sure if I wanted to spend the money, but. Okay, there we are. And we're at a six, right? No, Seven. we're, uh, yes, we're at a six. Okay. This is a six. Okay, now our third head comes out. And did you say there's a little? Um, yeah, there's a little that. nodule, but you have to find where the, oh, the hole is, and then you turn the it to the square inside, yeah. mm -hmm. too. Okay, again, I like to have it in eating sizes. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do three of these, and then the last one we're going to make angel hair. Put this over here again. Oh, is the another attachment for angel hair? Or no, it's the same spaghetti, but the noodle is thinner. Okay. And that cooks in about three minutes flat in <laughs> boiling water. Oh, it looks so soft. I think it's so beautiful. Now, when that boils, it's thicker, it, it swells, it's and you think, oh, this is too thin for spaghetti, but it's not. Okay. Now, That's I'm, not I'm wondering about the cutting head. How does it know how thin that pasta is? Does it just kind of, uh, you know how your printer will fill for the thickness of the paper? Is that what this is doing too, or do you even know? No, it, it, whatever the rollers, the two rollers, that's what they cut. They won't cut anything thicker or thinner. The, the thickness or, th or thinness of the dough is what you decide. Okay. But if you want your spaghetti thicker than this, you can. You can have your spaghetti as thick as the fettuccine. I prefer this, uh, it to be thinner. Mm -hmm. That's my personal preference. My sister would have it thicker than this. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> but we're sisters, but we don't always... Uh, like the same things. <laughs> so this is the way I do it. If you want thicker spaghetti, there's, it's not a problem. Okay. Again, you can do the very same thing with this as you did with the fettuccine. You can eat it immediately, you can freeze it, or you can dry it. And we're just going to go like that because I want to dry this. Of course, I'm thinking, let's just fix it immediately. But then I'm thinking down the road how much time it would save just to have this ready to go. So okay, I have, I have no marinara sauce. Say I have no marinara sauce. I have nothing. And here comes company. But I have this. Mm -hmm. What I do is I boil that spaghetti up and I make an absolutely wonderful primavera sauce, which is just olive oil, butter, a little garlic, and chop up some veggies and saute them in there. Throw that on the pasta. It's a wonderful meal. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah, that's what I love about this step is it's so versatile. You have this and it can, it has endless possibilities. Endless possibilities is correct. Mm -hmm. I remember going to my friend's house to eat. It was supposed to be a wonderful, this wonderful meal. Mm -hmm. And when we went in, uh, there were about eight of us, went in, there was nothing. There was nothing prepared. And I thought, well, you know, maybe I misunderstood because my Italian is certainly not all that well. <laughs> but. When it was time to eat, we went into a feast, and, and it was because they prepare things uh, quickly, fresh, and uh, when we were eating the first plate, they were finishing up the main course, which was a steak, which was, and so everything was prepared, but it wasn't cooked yet. They didn't cook it until we ate it, so that was quite... So you've been to Italy many times. Yes. But you learned to cook Italian before you went. 
From my grandmother, my right. nana Rosali, yes. But you probably picked up a few more tips. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's wonderful over there because, uh, it like I said before, it depends upon what part of Italy you're from. Mm -hmm. If you go f uh, north, you, it's more of the cream sauces. You go south, it's more of your spicy food. Mm -hmm. So, but, uh, and I think that I told you this before that I, uh, you think you have the recipe for something but then someone else says, no, I have the recipe for that. Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to it, it's a variation of the same thing. And they might add or subtract a vegetable or a spice. But it's not, neither one is wrong. They're both right. It's just your, your own personal preference mm -hmm. or how you learn to make it from the person that was doing it that day. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Okay, now we're going to go. Um, you change the head. Again. I have to change the head. Sorry. There I was. <laughs> Like I say, with the other machine, I don't have to change the head. Okay. I'm sorry. There we go. If you've never used the KitchenAid, there's a, it's a square head she's fitting in there. Yes. Okay, now we're going to go down very, very, very thin. This is almost translucent. Actually, you can see your hand through it. I have to check it. Oh, no, I dented it with my nails. All Remember? right. And this is the seven, isn't it? So you can still this go one more. This is the seven. You could go one more. What would someone use even a thinner one for? Maybe baklava or something? Perhaps. Perhaps that would be... I'm sorry this is taking me so long I have to line it up with that. Okay, there we are. There's your angel hair. I'm going to feel the difference. Very subtle. But you can tell, you want to see? This one's an angel hair. <gasps> Don't shake them too hard. They fell apart. There we are. Okay. There's so our... Uh, the we've made all of this pasta just from one-fourth of the dough that we made. That's right. All right. So we're going to cook some right now, right? Yes. And what kind of sauce are we going to make? I have, uh, I have a red sauce, and we can do uh, a butter sauce, too, or... Anything. What, what would you like? We'll do it. <laughs> we can do a little bechamel, a little cream sauce. Well, let's go ahead and cook some of these. Okay. And uh, what do we... We need boiling water with we salt. We need boiling water with salt in it. There's no salt in the pasta. The salt comes from the water, not in the pasta. Okay. So, okay. and if we... Do you ever put any other flavors in the water? No. Just with salt? Okay. Just the salt. That's it. All right, I, well, I would good. want to say one more thing to you. See mm -hmm. these little pieces here? I never throw anything away. That'll go into a soup or wh whatever. I, I keep all that little um, pasta and we use it somewhere. So you just dry it out until you're ready to make a big batch of soup? Yeah. Awesome. That's, that's it. All right. Just, you don't have to waste anything. So there we have our pasta. Thank you very much, Mary. And let's see some more possibilities and some future episodes for what we can do with this. Okay. My pleasure.